All right, just want to start by uh, uh, recognizing some of our guys from the game, um, our scout team players that uh, work so hard throughout the week. We actually recognize our entire defensive line uh, in one of our meetings prior to kickoff. But uh, Ray Stewart was our defensive scout team player of the week, defensive lineman here. Local young man from Bloomington North doing a great, great job for us. Uh, offensive scout team players of the week, uh, Jack Greer and Brady Simmons. Two in-state guys are just working really, really hard. And then uh, special team scout of the week is Jackson Shot. So uh, appreciate those guys' efforts, all that they do for us um, and helping us prepare each week. Um, really uh, um, just getting our guys back refocused and ready for a big challenge on the road. Uh, Coach Shiano has done a great job there and still in his culture and his toughness and the way that they play. And, and uh, obviously, every road game is a, a tough challenge. And so uh, looking forward to this. I also want to address the, uh, uh, the news we had this morning with, that was released with the Jack Tuttle situation. And just so we're all on the same page with that, that uh, Jack and I met um, last week and had a really, really uh, great time together and just open and honest conversation about him and appreciate everything he's done for us. And, and uh, he's going to leave Indiana here with uh, two degrees. And most recently, he'll be getting his MBA from our Kelly School of Business. And so doing everything we can to help him finish up that way. But has a desire to want to play his final year, you know. And uh, so um, do everything I can to support him in that. He's been a great leader for us. He's been a great teammate. And uh, I don't expect that to change. And uh, he and I are on the same page with that. And I think that uh, a, lot, a lot of love and respect for Jack. I appreciate all he's done for us. And so he's going to finish out with our team and do everything the right way, as he's always done. And uh, I don't expect that anything to change along those lines. So maybe a unique situation for sure, but I think it also speaks to his character and, and to what we're about here. And uh, I want to help him be able to um, do the things that he'd like to do in the future. Questions? I guess following on from that, but bigger picture with the these portal windows now and kind of this idea of maybe building a little bit more structure into transfer recruiting. Do you see this being something that could become a little bit more commonplace, almost like a, a free agent sort of announcing they're going to opt out of their deal or something? It's not like they're leaving the team. They just if it's announced that at the end of the year they're going to. I would think that's a pretty fair analysis and a comparison. You know, mm -hmm. we're not used to this kind of thought process necessarily collegially, but I think that would be for guys that have already graduated uh, and gotten their degree. Uh, I could see that being the case, and uh, um, I get it. I do, and so it's definitely different. You know, but uh, we had, like you said, it was. Uh, he came to me and we talked it through and then there even just from his because of the program he's in there's also um different timetable different calendar for that master's program compared to even a normal semester for our undergraduate students so that creates some challenges as well that we're willing to work with him with and help him uh, be able to accomplish that so yeah i do think moving forward you'll see more of this i think it's kind of the reality of the new world that we're in with with college sports Hey, Coach, I, you know, I tried to ask you to give too much away, but with this announcement, does it change how you guys view the backup quarterback position going forward? I mean, no, because uh, I trust Jack, and he and I have talked that through, and uh, not at all. I believe that uh, uh, he's always been in the past and ready when called upon, and I don't think that's going to change. Tom, so we talked a little bit about the uh, about uh, monsters um, unsportsmanlike uh, call on Saturday. That's obviously, I think, two in in two weeks for him. Is that is that a concern at all, or is it just a situation? Do you look at you know Saturdays and say you know that's really ticky tack, but you've got to just yeah. I mean, it was costly. So and we 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 obviously you know addressed that, and then he and I had a you know um, good conversation Saturday night, and and uh, he was just disappointed, you know, really frustrated that it happened, and and uh, but you know, he's. He's one of our leaders. He's and I just I thought he made a really good play. You know, just to me, just celebrate with your teammates and you know, don't you know look look down at a guy, or whatever, man. To me, but that was I said what I said after the game. I still feel that way. But at the same time, you know, you just play the next play. You know, celebrate with your teammates, play the next play. But yeah, it was costly. It was a costly penalty. Kind of sticking on a theme with the defense. What have you? What did you necessarily see after you went back and looked at the film? And what do you guys need to rectify going forward this weekend? Against yeah, I, uh, um, tackling stuck out to me. You know, I mean, just and I know they got a lot of good athletes, and then that's that, that makes it more challenging. I get that, but but uh, just uh, um, 
too many missed tackles, you know, and I thought that was, was huge for us, and especially there at the end, you know, got the lead, and, and I shared with our team. I felt like that, uh, yeah, there, I get it, you can't turn the ball over. But uh, we had the lead in the fourth quarter uh, with a chance to finish it out and didn't do it, you know, and so it's about finishing plays. Um, still continue to play a lot of guys. Those guys got to execute in those situations, but it really wasn't so much of that. It was more of just making plays on guys when we got a chance to be in position to do that and and uh, um, whether it's proper leverage and, and being able to near foot, near shoulder, a technique we use all the time and work on every single week and, and multiple times a week and and uh, just getting guys on the ground, you know, and so I just felt like that was uh, hurt us with the quarterback for sure and being able to get him corralled and, and he's very elusive. He does a great job, but uh, um, just that and just execution, you know, to me, there's a couple of things that uh, communication wise got to continue to work through and get guys ready to roll. Uh, no matter whether they're true freshmen, which we had some guys out there that are in that situation, the guys are young, just got here, you know, and not played a lot of college football. But uh, um, the tackling to me was really the thing that stuck out. Tom, obviously, the two turnovers hurt, uh, put the defense in a, in a tough position. Uh, but the offense seemed to pick up the pace this week a little bit, uh, a little bit better of play on the offensive line. The defense continues, especially in the back, in the secondary, to not be able to really stop teams. Yeah. Where can you be able to put your finger on what's going on there? Yeah, that's been a, a, a big disappointment for me. You know, I know we got some, you know, some guys dinged up back there, but uh, still got some younger guys that need to step up and make those plays. And and uh, to me, those, you know, when you and we we played a variety of coverages Saturday, um, a lot of different things that we do and and try to do because of, of their scheme and, and their talent level. And so, I uh, just felt like a couple times that we really um, just didn't come up with a play. I mean, you just got to make a play. You know, there's critical situations, and whether it's a, you know, a breakup. Or you know whether it's just uh, um, you know we had the ball on the ground twice and we get the football that hurt us. Those have been huge. You know one was following our first offensive turnover to start the game. We had the ball on the ground, guys hands on the ball, didn't come up with it, um, and uh, just also feel like you know we tried to make a couple adjustments on certain things and just yeah I've been yeah it's been a, you know to me that's. A team, a, a unit that I wanted to be the strength of our of our defense, especially with Cam being out now. Those guys got to keep stepping up even more uh, to be able to take some pressure off the, the linebacker core, and uh, so that group needs to continue to rise up. We got a lot of veterans in that group. You know, good, you know, good Lord, when we're going to get Jalen back this week, that's the hope, and uh, that will definitely help for sure, give us more depth there. And, and uh, but at the same time, you know, I love a lot of enough guys on that field that uh, play enough football to be able to finish out. And so I just, um, yeah, just. Really, really frustrated by that, sick about that, because I felt like that's really where we let this, the game slip away was we just didn't, we didn't finish them off on our defensive side of the ball. And I told our team that this morning. It was on the defense. Hey, Tom, you just mentioned uh, finishing. And I think on Saturday, you said how that can also be like a mentality mm -hmm. that's built in a team. How can, how can, I guess maybe when you look at teams in the past, how did you build that finishing mentality? And at this point in the season, how can you try to apply that to this? this well, we got to flip the script because we started that season doing that, and then these last several games we have not. And uh, I know, obviously, you're playing really good football teams with good players, but at the same time, you know, it, it starts in practice. You know, we actually showed a clip um, uh, the very play that they that they scored one touchdown on was the exact play, exact formation, same part of the field, same everything that we did a walkthrough rep on the day before. You know, and so just continue, and we didn't execute it. You know, and getting getting off the field in that situation. Or the touchdown. So, uh, but that's it's it's got to translate from the practice rep, the walkthrough rep, to the game rep. And uh, so, to me, we're going to continue to evaluate, making sure we're keeping things simple enough so our guys can execute. And a lot of guys can execute them. Whoever's in the combination, because as the game wears on, you get different. You know, like you got a guy like Jalen out, so then now it's his backups playing, and then his his backups behind him. And those guys are playing both, you know, decent amount of reps. So now that's really your third guy. So those guys got to be communicating. They got to be able to execute the calls, whatever happens. To be doesn't matter uh, and so we're just trying to continue to find ways to, to simplify that for those guys so they can finish those plays out because it is it's, it becomes uh, an expectation uh, when you do and it becomes a, a, a source of doubt when you don't you know and that's where you gotta uh, I think we got too many guys that are just a little unsure maybe and uh, we gotta eliminate the uncertainty of them and making sure they're playing with that level of confidence because I think that's what it shows out in those in those critical plays at the end of the game. Uh, sticking, sticking with defense, just midseason, how do you fix some of those issues where just getting guys to the ground on yeah. first contact and, and guys making stops one-on-one, -on -one, 
you know, outside of watching film and all that, are there drills that you can do just to make sure that this guy, this group gets to the standards that you have? Yeah, and that's the thing. I tell you what, you need to go back. And I knew. I watched it, you know, live, and then I, you know, watched it again that night. But, man, there were so many times we had guys right there, you know. And, and that's where I'm like, guys, we got to finish the place. You know, we got to get them on the ground. And, and there was a key third down where we had – three guys, you know, missed them, you know, and, and three of our better players, you know, and so um, that, so what we're going to do to answer your question, you know, even this week, we're going to be able to do um, not full bore live, but we're going to tackle people, you know, and, and we got to be able to, you know, we're always working on our technique and our drills and everything we do with, you know, the mechanisms, whether it's a sled or whether it's a, you know, pop-up dummy or whatever it is on, on the crash pad, we're going to do it with, with bodies, you know, just to be able to, the movement, the twist, the, the ability to be able to do that and get the thud up and squeeze the elbows, run the feet. So we're going to change that. You know, we just feel like it's necessary. Don't really like doing that during the season, but we feel like we got to do it, you know, just because I want to make sure we eliminate those because we got to get them on the ground, you know, and there's just we work too hard to get those guys in that position. We got to finish those plays out. And and uh, we knew on film that he was a very difficult quarterback to keep in the pocket, you know, and so and we missed him several times. And so but that to me is still once again, continue to work on that and angles and anticipation where the guy's going to roll to and move to when he breaks containment, because that's part of, you know, guys usually have habits of how they avoid or evade you in, in, in the pocket. So just continuing to probably the answer is more physical bodies tackling, you know, by the, the, our own, you know, our uh, scout team receivers, tight ends, running backs in those drills to be able to, to help us improve that here this part of the year. Coach, you've talked about how in the face of adversity, you learn like who you really are. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you guys are kind of in, in some adversity now losing four in a row. Have you liked what you've seen, the way the guys have responded in that adversity? Is there things that you haven't liked? I guess just well, own. yeah, I would say, you know, and obviously today was our, our day with our guys. Our, our off day is, is Sundays, and and uh, they do things voluntarily um, in recovery mode and with our, our medical staff. But, uh, um, yeah, I just think that uh, um, – Obviously, we haven't practiced tomorrow, so I'll, I'll have a better feel tomorrow. But I think up to this point, uh, there's a lot of maturity from our, our team. Uh, there's a lot of hurting guys right now, uh, frustrated guys right now, and guys that that uh, want to create change, you know. And so, um, and to me, it is. I mean, you, the foundation of who you are, um, gets exposed when things go wrong, and uh, it also gets um, strengthened. I think. And so, it's a, it's an interesting process that you go through when difficulties arise in life and uh, to a team. And so. So the very core of who you are, that has to be the foundation that you hold on to. That's your anchor uh, when things are hard and when things are rough and when things are going against you. And so that's where we got a chance for the character of our players, the character of our team, the character of our, of our whole organization, the, the culture we have here at Indiana to be able to just, you know, stand strong and, 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 and just like families do, you, you, you get closer together and you get tighter and you just turn to rely on each other more instead of, you know, breaking apart when things get hard, you know. And so that's where the, the stronger the foundation, the, the, you know, the, the better chance you have of staying together. Doesn't make it any easier. Doesn't make the, the difficulties go away without question. But, um, yeah, I do like what I see, you know, even, even Cam. Cam continues to lead and it's as hard as it is for him to be on the sideline and not being able to help us physically. Um, he continues to, to lead and to address the team even again this morning. And, and uh, so um, just going to continue to build off of those things and those guys and those leaders on our team and, and continue to help really grow the younger guys because they've not been through this before, you know, or guys that have, you know, been other places in the past to teach them how we stay together during these difficult times and, and continue to fight and battle and, and play hard for each other. So um, still a lot out there for us to play for, and that's our guys understand that. And uh, bottom line is we got to be able to continue to learn from our mistakes and, and press on. We did make some, did some positive things on Saturday night, but not enough. And uh, uh, I think our guys recognize that, and we're going to continue to point those things out in, in a very appropriate way when the, whatever intensity is necessary to get the result we're looking for. And, and obviously, you want to create change. you got to change something you do every day. So we're changing schedules, changing this, going to change game day. We're going to change things up to continue to try and get the best uh, physical and emotional response out of our guys. At this point in the season, over just 
past the halfway point. How would you assess Connor's play and what he's brought to your offense? Well, I would say, you know, even Saturday's game, uh, you know, the, the, the two costly picks, you know, and obviously there's very many variables that go into those, but uh, um, that's a negative thing without question. We all know that. It was very costly. Um, but outside of that, he played really well, you know, and so you, you can't just throw everything out because you make a couple mistakes, but you obviously got to understand those mistakes can't be made, you know, and there's not just, it's not a one person mistake in some of those, but at the same time, that position demands that, you know, so, um, and I think that's kind of been, you know, um, the way he's um, beginning to, you know, I think we've seen improvements. All right, but I also want to make sure that we're doing a great job of protecting the football. You know, I think that's one thing we've always said, and and uh, that's why we work so hard on ball security for every other position on offense. And that is, you know, having the ball, you know, in the proper hand when you're running up the sideline to the, you know, si sidelines to my left, the ball's in my left hand. You know, that's just a fundamental thing that we emphasize all the time and didn't do it. But uh, but for Connor, to me, it's it's continuing to show tremendous toughness. Um, just being able to be so steady um, in those areas, but just got to continue to grow. And I, I can see him, you know, make some adjustments with us and get better and play better and do some good things and give us an opportunity. And the thing about it is, you know, we've had opportunities in every one of these games to be in position in the fourth quarter to, to go win a game, you know. And even even you think back to, you know, the Cincinnati game where we dug such a big deficit, we still had a chance to to go score, to get it to a one possession game in the fourth quarter. And so every game has been that way. Um, and so whether it's been on the road or at home, and so you got to, um, he's given us those opportunities, I believe. At the same time, you know, we got to now, we got to finish better. And we got to eliminate those those kind of mistakes. And so um, I would say that there's definitely been the good and the bad, you know, and, uh, but at the same time, you know, we're growing together and we got to continue to get better and we got to finish. Got to finish as a team, got to finish as an office, got to finish as a defense. I feel like we've probably asked you this before in some context, but with Rutgers specifically, they're coming off a bye week. They've also got a new offensive coordinator. I'm sure they're not going to make wholesale changes, but how do you parse getting ready for a team when there's a lot of film out there and obviously they've struggled offensively recently, but you, mm -hmm. you know, trying to figure out essentially what they might do differently. Yeah, that's, that is the challenge, you know, and so we seem to be um, getting many opportunities to, to, to figure that out, you know, so, um, and uh, so, yeah, I, you're, you don't really know. So you got a new uh, – you can't just change your whole system. We get that, you know, but they do have a bye week. Like, like I said, this happened to us in the past here this year. So there will be some new things you're for sure going to see. Um, quarterback position for them has kind of probably been their um, issue, you know, and, and just keeping guys healthy and having certain guys in there. And so don't really know who that's going to be. That's probably the biggest question mark. Uh, so then you kind of go back and you got to have some different thoughts about each guy and what his strengths are and what he brings to the table. So you're kind of going through that process right now, figuring out what do you think they'll do to maximize those guys and those roles when they're when they're behind center. So uh, um, that to me is is the biggest challenge. And so yeah, it's a lot of unknowns. So once again, the first couple series are going to be big. Uh, we're not really 100% sure what we're going to see. So we're going to have to be able to be really really good coaches and adapt and adjust on the on the hoof and and put a game plan together that has the ability to, to do that adaptation for our guys from the sideline when the game gets going. Coach, it seems like over the last few weeks, Emory Simmons has been a little bit more involved. I know some of that's because injuries and DJ being out, they kind of play that same spot. But I guess how big has he been and, and kind of have you seen him grow um, you know, as the season's gone along. It's been encouraging. You know, I just, uh, he's playing the way I expected him to play. You know, as we all know, he's the guy we recruited the first time around, wanted him here several years ago and finally got him here. And uh, just his confidence continues to grow. He made some big catches for us, big plays. Uh, I just love his mindset, man. He's just such a worker. I mean, the way he is every rep is just exactly like practice every single day. And uh, guys have stepped up in that room. And uh, uh, DJ is getting healthier all the time. So that's a very positive thing for us. And, and uh, just trying to get uh, those guys healthy in there and ready to roll. And Cam's getting back to health again. Made some big plays for us, obviously. But but really, really excited for and happy for Emory. You know, he's just uh, such a great young man that um, I really have a lot of confidence in. And uh, he's now playing at the level that I expected him to. Coach, we talked to Connor, and he said the difference about this team is that they know they're good. Is mm -hmm. that kind of the attitude that you've seen from the guys after? The I do, and I know people can whatever you think about it. You know, we've obviously you know lost four in a row now, which uh, is is not positive. But um, you get to decide how you think, and each person gets to decide uh, how they respond um, to 
adversity and and I do believe our team thinks that way you know and uh, uh, which makes it more frustrating you know without question but at the same time um, you know if you don't believe in yourself why should anybody else and so our guys understand that we put enough on done enough good things uh, each week to, to recognize that but it also comes to the point in time you guys say okay we gotta we gotta find ways to finish out games you know and uh, uh, but I do feel like that uh, when you when you look in their eye and you watch how they prepare and you watch how they approach their weight room today which is I think a pretty telltale sign on a Monday morning after a tough loss and you come in you say how are they going to work in that weight room with our strength staff and I use that as our litmus test in a lot of ways because sometimes it's when you're because I mean I'm with them first before we go into the weight room and we do it separate so offense and defense separate so um, you know you don't always get a great read when you're just talking to them you know that first time uh, you can tell some things um, but that to me is really the key and uh that just showed me that these guys understand, you know, what's in front of us, and and they're a resilient group. They're a very tough-minded uh, group. Um, we just gotta, you know, find continuous ways to to play better, to finish. Uh, you're playing against really good people. Um, I think the Big Ten has always been good since I've been here. Uh, I think it's the best it's been. You know, I think the East is the best it's ever been since I've been here. I ain't even close. You know, and so uh, everybody we play is really good, and we probably we played one of the teams that's going to have a chance to. To compete for the to win the West, you know. So, um, and then you play a Cincinnati team that's you know top twenty five program. We played in the playoff a year ago. So, uh, you play a lot of good football teams. So your margin for error is not very big, and so you get a couple guys dinged up, the wrong guys, and it hurts you. But you got to have other guys step up. So I think our guys recognize who we are. They recognize what we can become, um, and obviously the clock's ticking. So that's where you just understand that uh, there's a brevity to this, and the guys recognize that. We got a lot of guys, and we're trying to individually challenge them, and they've responded. So. We just got to stay together, keep fighting, and finish this thing off right. Coach, kind of a two-part question about James Evans. Um, one, how did you guys originally find him? And he, he had talked about how basically transitioning to the U.S., like one of the things that was difficult for him was driving on the other side of the street. I guess <laughs> basically how have you seen him last year especially just transition to, to being in the U.S.? The simple things of life, right? Which side of the road you're supposed to drive on. Yeah, that's right. So, but uh, no, nah, he, and he's such a, he's such a, he makes us all laugh, even when he's not even trying to, because uh, things like that, you know, he just, uh, America was just different for him, you know, a lot of ways. And so, uh, but, you know, the way we found him, you know, we have you know, Pro Kicker Australia is a, is a group of guys that uh, formed years ago, and, and I got connected with them. Um, and they help place kickers from that part of the country, you know, to America to kick, you know, and uh, uh, especially the area of punters, you know. And so um, through that organization, he's the third one we've gotten from them, and uh, they've been awesome to us. You know, they kind of know the culture we're looking for because they, they, they know him way better than we do, you know. It's kind of unique when you recruit. You know, you always have to figure out who they are, but when they're halfway across the world, it's really difficult, you know, to really know them. You don't really have – that you can't go visit them, you know, that kind of thing. And so um, we just, I got to trust them that they, they know what we're all about here, what we're looking for academically. We want an academically focused young man, as well as a guy that's going to work the way we want him to work and, and handle his business off the field the way he needs to do that and, and care about things we care about. So, um, you know, they, they told me when they, when they had him, they said he's, he's, he's raw, but they think this kid's got, you know, NFL potential, you know, the leg strength wise. And, and so we've seen that. You know, and he's 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 playing more consistently now, uh, which is his the word he chose for this whole year for himself personally. So, but uh, um, you know, we had a strong leg, and so you, what you do is they send his video, and we go through and we have all these different angles and different things because you got to be able to tell the drop and the hang time and the d distance, and they have a whole systematic way of presenting that to us so we can see it with our own eyes as we watch the video. And uh, once again, there's there's trust involved, you know, and uh, I, I believe that he's actually because you. You don't even know who they are, you know, so it's not like you're saying, is that really going to be the guy, that, the guy that we watch kick? Is that the one we're going to get sent? So uh, it's kind of like you put your order in for, you know, over over the Internet. But uh, at the same time, um, he uh, um, he's been everything they said he would be, you know, and he definitely had to learn. I mean, he had to figure out how to wear pads. He had to figure out how what it was like to to kick a ball with a helmet on. And and now they do practice with a helmet on. That's one thing they do in their training. But wearing all the pads and getting some people running at you and, and, and trying to, to, to block your, your kick, you know, that's that's totally new to him, you know, and the game itself is totally new to him. So, but uh, yeah, just a, an awesome young man uh, that has a very live leg and uh, we're seeing more of that each week and that needs to continue.
behind you. We need him to be able to help us flip the field and do a great job of, of uh, you know, being a great special teams player. So that's kind of how we found him, and uh, he's uh, he's not disappointed. Awesome. Have a great day, Elio.